I have to write them in my phone or I forget stuff. Yeah, that's how I treat a grocery list. Smart way to do it if you got to do it, you know. I started writing the grocery list on the fridge, and uh, it's in a... Hello, welcome to episode 324 <laughs> of We Were Gamers. I, I think this is important. In an effort to become more or- organized... Hello, uh, I'm Andy. I'm trying to get more organized. JJ, are you more organized? Hmm, debatable. Michael, are you somewhat organized? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I I write it on the fridge, so I know people like have smart fridges and stuff, and you can tell it like the milk goes here, and if it's gone, then put it on the grocery list. And I'm not an Internet of Things kind of person specifically. I do have some smart devices we've talked about, but uh, in the past on this show like a doorbell or whatever. But like in theory, the idea of the Samsung that brings down the whole network because it got hacked, not, not so great. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I write my notes on the fridge now, most of the time. By which you mean there's a piece of paper and a pen and you use the pen to write on the piece of paper that is White. stuck to the fridge. Whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. But organizationally, that's a good one. And then uh, since we do this podcast, I thought I would mention to you guys, I got a thing. It's like, it's roughly the shape of your your headband for your headphones, and the back of it is sticky. And I stuck it to the side of my desk, and now my headphones, which are always on my desk, hang off the side of my desk. Game changer. Okay. 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 Cool. That sounds cool. I'm just saying, find one that works for you, but getting a headphone organized. We use headphones for this. I use headphones a lot of the time because I could wait, accidentally wake people up, you know, whatever. Uh, if things are too loud, I have some strong speakers on this computer accidentally. Not accidentally. I like strong speakers. Accidentally, accidentally on purpose. Accidentally. Yeah, I was going to be like, accidentally, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, they're white. They match my PC. I had to get them. Anyway. Uh, I had to. I, there was had, no choice. I couldn't just possibly have had like to get them. speakers I think... of moderate range. I had to get <laughs> full range. <laughs> Dynamic range. Look, they had so, to have I needed the subwoofer. I had to have one. At least two tweeters apiece. Oh, boy. Uh, I hope you guys had a nice weekend. I'm kind of still getting back into it. It was a long one, but a good one. Um, mentally, I was going to do this transition. I don't know if you, you like it. I like my headphone organizer. It's a great invention for organizing. But we have other great inventions to talk about, don't we? Nice. I did well it. played. Yeah. Uh, JJ, give us a recap. Or Michael. Whoever feels like it. I'm trying to remember the original impetus of this topic that we pizza. delayed for a while. Michael, yeah, pizza. Michael brought us pizza as as yes. humanity's greatest food invention. Or more specifically, it was, it, Michael. Yeah, it was. Is there any better com- like three part combination than bread? What was it? Bread, tomato, cheese. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's what it was. Yeah. And so we got into a discussion of could we think of a better trio, which then led us down the rabbit hole of, well, can we think of like, what is the single thing that we would pick that stands above the rest? Yeah. Okay. Single that, thing that's... that we picked as a, a human iteration of food. Like right. it has so to we be manipulated pick, we by hand. We couldn't pick wheat. Right. But also, did we decide we couldn't pick like large categories like stew? Like what? Like stew, like soup, you know? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, we can, if we have to pick a specific one, I'll accept that we have to pick specific ones. Mine's, oh, okay. mine's also, mine's also a bit of a category, but okay, also no, kind of not. Stick, so. stick with your originals. I want to hear what, what you came up with. Um, it's going to be wild and different for everybody. I think to think of, uh, what uh, pizza is great, but I don't think it's, the greatest invention in the culinary arts of all time. 
Because, I mean, yeah, focaccia often comes with tomatoes and cheese on it. <laughs> it's like if, if the only, only criteria the is... Uh, true, true. <laughs> if, if the criteria is bread, tomato, and cheese, there's like... 8,000 different food types that that falls into, right? Sure. Like, yeah, I mean, that's its own debate. Is bread There's a reason a new, why it's so it, yeah, good, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're just talking about wheat noodles, then pasta, you know, it's like all kind of the same. So, like, I think there's a... I, I didn't pick this, but I think there's a really strong argument to be made in this discussion for just actually bread. Uh, yeah. I considered it as well, yeah. I, I, I thought also, it would be, like... Too much of a cop out to pick it, uh, which is why I didn't. Only because it's like, I don't know, too foundational. Like it's like, I think it's like you know the fourth thing we ever did with anything you know domesticated ever or something probably <laughs> right. Um, but you know, I mean, bread is pretty good, you guys. Like bread. pretty good. True story. It's a wide range of breads that I find quite agreeable. Yeah, and even ones that you don't like, I think you can probably be like. Yeah, but it's like not that bad. I don't think there's a bread that I don't appreciate. Like, I don't think there's a bread that I'm like, I don't eat that bread. There's Even certainly like ones the... I would have over other ones, but oh, I don't think sure, there's any bread you just give to me and I'd be like, you would just turn it down. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm, what I'm saying is there's no natty ice of bread. <laughs> 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 okay, sure. Yeah. You know, like yeah, every yeah. bread is at least a Coors Light. Yeah, Fair but enough. most spreads are somewhere in the like, you know, fat tire range, and then uh, a lot of good breads are are craft beer. I don't, that's that's convoluted because it's really kind of relatable bread. metaphor there. Yeah, uh, I'm. I was gonna say I'm. I'm really glad that that's where you went, Andy, because and I guess I'll go first here. I picked Pizza beer. Beer. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I. I. I thought one of us would do it, so I didn't do it. I, I fully considered this as a choice. Yeah. Go. And it wasn't... You have to give like it at least a few just, minutes speech on this. Sure. So it wasn't just how prevalent beer has become within like American culture and the craft beer scene. Um, it was kind of chosen in the historical context, too, because beer has been around for however many thousands of years people have been brewing. And has been used, you know, not not just as as an enjoyable hobby, but in in certain cases like um, sustenance. Right. People were were fed beer um, as it, part of their their ration to survive or, you know, in some mm -hmm. some cases like the monks where they would brew beer that would be their meal. Yeah, it yeah. turns out that when you live in places with really bad water quality, beer is better to drink. It is way safer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Beer's I, a good invention. I mean, I I also was going to put in there like distilling and alcohol in general like but then you you start to get into well, alcohol is actually really important for non-food reasons. Oh yeah. yeah. It, and then like, you know, cooking with alcohol and stuff is its whole own thing, right? Like there's a million different reasons to cook things with alcohol in it to burn the alcohol off and get like amazing flavors out of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, JJ, that's you're it. on the clock, bud. All right, so I, like I said, I considered a couple of the other ones here, um, but I think I finally settled on sausage. Whoa! All right, that that was on my list as well, actually. And like, I'm like, you know, not like breakfast sausages. Although look, I'm not turning down a breakfast sausage, obviously. But I'm I'm thinking more along like you know the the big like sausage. You know, all like a a bratwurst style kind of a sausage. That's Something what I'm thinking with a of. Casing. Sure. Yeah, the casing specifically was what I was thinking about because it's like, who came up with the idea <laughs> to be like, you know what we could do with these entrails that no one is using? <laughs> could stuff these full of this other meat <laughs> and then cook it and it will be delicious. Is it meat? I mean well the casing isn't, right? The casing is is uh intestine lining yeah often often yeah yes. uh and it's like who came up with this idea <laughs> i want to <laughs> know but it sure is great and man do i love it in honestly anything and 
The amazing thing is that the versatility of sausage, right? Like with beer, there's like a billion things you can do that generally fall into the category of making beer. And sausage is like a huge world of different things. Yeah, you can like the different kinds of casing you use make a huge difference. The different kinds of meats you put in there make a huge difference. Blends of meats, the blends of spices. It's like it's a whole like baking thing, you know, you, like oh, I'm going to put more coriander in this one or I'm going to put some fennel seeds and that gives it a whole new flavor, right? Yep. Like, you know, stuff it full of soy. It's like still probably pretty good most of the time, right? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> I don't know, but it's like a it's a great vehicle for delivering delicious food to me. Beautiful. That's my that's my choice. Uh, what about you, Andy? I, I, I wanted to do these things that I loved and so I started with beer and I thought well, someone else will do it. So I shouldn't do it. And then um, I started to think about like meals that I cook all the time. And I picked a couple of those and wrote them down. And then a couple of days ago, I was standing in the kitchen and I thought like, OK, well, what do I always have? And it was like looking around um, at things that I always had, like peanut butter. Peanut butter is really important in our house. Oh, a lot yeah, of like peanut butter so much. Oh my god! Dude. And I thought that was too close to the thing because really peanut butter is just peanuts. Uh, in our house, especially, we don't buy anything in it. It's got no added anything. You got to put oil it's in still, it. Though. It's still processed. You, yeah, you gotta, like, yeah. You can't well, just so, put peanuts on a sandwich with jelly. You you, you can't. You shouldn't just put peanuts on a sandwich <laughs> with jelly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he got there correctly. Don't you know? You can't take accepted. him out for that one. Some people choose chunky peanut butter. It's like Look, a crime. They're wrong for doing yeah. that, but that's fine. Is that a crime? No. no. It's not a crime. It's a preference. Yeah, it's it might a bad, be a wrong preference, it's wrong. but it's yeah, a preference. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. You could you could like bad things, but we get to judge you for I it. I love <laughs> when we all come together uh for for one small moment <laughs> and just hate on <laughs> chunky peanut butter. <laughs> Dunk on people who love <laughs> chunky. Get out of here. Uh, I picked the granddaddy of the kitchen because I realized that I now, uh, in what getting older and watching what we eat and all that sort of stuff, uh, I use every day something that is very, uh, processed and would not, my kitchen would not run without it. And that's olive oil. That's a good one. Ooh, man. Yeah. And I kind of thought thought about it. I was like, well, is it just oil? Is it just things like, okay, well, throw a pat of butter, you know? Like, And I thought it wasn't as important to me because especially other oils and stuff I always use in conjunction. I never just throw a pat of butter. It's always with olive oil or something else mixed. Um, and oftentimes it just wouldn't make a meal work without it. I know it's not really in the purview of manufacturing. I mean, but it is processed and it, and it's, I think probably, probably not maybe, maybe butter's first, but it's probably right up there with butter in the first processed foods that people probably made, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely like records and, stuff of olive oil being made you know back in the roman times and before that even um yeah i don't know how old butter is but i'm sure it was around in that time sure. period as well so you know you're, you're probably as, right as far as cuisine goes you know many multiple cuisines around the world would not work without it and um yeah i i have gotten to the point in olive oils that i can taste the differences you know, it's there's a wide variety of, of stuff you can get into with that. It's kind of dangerous, actually. I think it's important for people who just think olive oil is like a thing you throw in a pan and then you cook with or whatever. Yeah. To understand that, like, good olive oil is so different. Like, yeah. it truly is. I, I And I can't, like, the first time I was made aware, it's like, oh, that thing you just put in the pan and cook with whatever, like, kind of no big deal. No, dude. Like, it's not. <laughs> You can have olive oils that are spicy all on their own. Just with the olives, like not extra ingredients. Yep. Like, yeah. it, And like actual good quality, fresh olive oil has such a better and different flavor than just like the random one gallon of olive oil you get at the store. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, even those you need to watch out for like, where did this come from? When was it manufactured? If you can find out because Did they think, go bad. I saw a stat. I saw a stat a couple years ago that was like 40% of olive oil in stores in America is actually rancid. I'd believe it. Oof. Because so many people don't understand or realize that like this is actually just bad. And, and like if all you're doing is again putting it in the pan to like keep your stuff from sticking to the pan or whatever, you don't care. Yeah. Right? But like Maybe. you you should you should care, but you know, the really olive oil in my mind these days is really meant for like putting on stuff for flavor. And if you're doing that, it, you're using bad olive oil you know yeah. quickly and and yeah. there's a lot of uh important points about cooking that a chef will tell you of like hey you shouldn't do this this and this with olive oil it's like yeah it, i i know uh that's why I, why i keep around sesame oil and avocado oil as well you know there's a lot of cooking temp stuff you have to get used to and certain flavors that olive oil can't produce and all that but i think part of part of the change in people's view of olive oil probably came around with canola oils and other oils that we use a lot a lot a lot more of in um the u.s i think it's like metric tons more you know um, yeah, vegetable oil is in everything you know? vegetable mm-hmm. oils and in, in almost everything and it's not really comparable oil because it's just a I don't know. I even know how you like get into canola oil as a description, but it is full of different types of saturated fats. And I mean, it's if you think that olive oil is processed because it is technically processed. Holy cow! The stuff in canola oil. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the you don't get those things to oil without some kind of stuff going on. Yeah. In theory, you know, if you were good, you could like squeeze an olive good enough to get oil out of it, right? You're not getting that out of <laughs> like corn and soybeans and stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I think it has a lot to do with like polysaturated fats and all the things they tell you are like really, really bad for your heart. Um, yeah, so I just landed on I was boring old olive oil. Sorry. Uh, no, I think that's I a know. good one. Yeah, it is, well, it is fundamental to so much cooking. <laughs> yeah, hey, all the people that like pizza as the choice. It's a lot of olive no olive oil, pizza. no pizza, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you're having a pizza that didn't use any olive oil in the process, first, ow, and then like second, <laughs> it's probably not very good. You know, I should check. We eat a weekly pizza here. And because we eat it weekly, we have gravitated to cauliflower cup crust pizzas. And I'm not like super into nutrition facts. I don't know if that was like, oh, he knows all about polysaturated fats. It's like, no, 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 no. But uh, I don't like read the backs or whatever, but uh, it's lighter. The cauliflower crust is like a lot lighter. You don't feel super full is one of the things that I kind of like about it. It took us a while to find a good one. Uh, shout out to Call it Power, I think. Call it Power, yes. Yeah. We've, we've tried theirs and they make some good ones. It gets crispy, unlike most other brands. Yes. Which is nice. It is a part, um, important part of having a pizza. If In your my pizza opinion, is limp, it's not good. Well, if you're from Chicago, you might disagree. Look, they can make casseroles if they want. <laughs> I'm talking about pizza over here. <laughs> Yeah, it should have a crunch when you fold it, you know? Uh, Yeah, that might have some olive oil in it. I don't know. I, I don't know what holds that together. Probably, right? Probably. Well, uh, if people have their suggestions that weren't beer or olive oil or sausage as mankind's, humankind's, uh, greatest contribution to the culinary arts. <laughs> Where would they send that, Michael? They can send that to podcast at weweregamers.com. Or tell, tell us, us why, why we're yeah. tell us why we're horribly wrong about chunky peanut butter. No. Don't even bother. I won't read it. <laughs> I won't read it. Oh boy. Speaking of reading. 
I did a lot of reading today. Okay. While playing Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent. Your I friend s- and mine. I just, I said it real fast to make sure people don't tune out. <laughs> the thing I want to talk about today real quick is actually fundamental to RPGs in general. So stick around if you play RPGs because I want to know JJ and Michael your operating theories on equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Champions of the Continent actually has a somewhat robust equipment system that um, later on in the game apparently comes down to like minute points of detail actually in grades and all sorts of weird things like that. But at the beginning of the game, it starts out with very easy uh, attack stats, defense stats, two of each, physical and elemental and other stats like speed and all those things like crit and whatever but i want to get down to the basics for a second when you're looking at armors especially how do you decide for a character if they're getting uh in champions they have three types of armor they have balanced imbalanced one uh to physical and imbalanced to elemental What's your what's your operating theory? How do you stare at your roster of eight team members and go, how am I going to split all this up? Who gets what? Uh, I've developed one today, but I'd like to hear yours. So mine tends to be about balancing out characters rather than specializing, right? Because the usually usually you'll see it go one of two ways, right? Characters have strengths and you can outfit them to enhance those strengths or you can outfit them to balance out the areas where they're not as strong. So I tend to go into the latter camp. And if I have a uh, at least where armor is concerned. So if I have a uh, if I have a mage who might have high uh, magic defense, but low physical defense, I'll equip them to balance that out. Just as a starting point, right? There, there are all kinds of things, passives and, and other things that will sway that. But that's where I start. Try and fight the de- the uh, character's deficiencies, as it were. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you mine. Uh, it's much less time intensive than Michael's. And it's, uh, did I unlock some new stuff just now? Can I afford it? And who has the worst armor in my party? <laughs> they get the new one because I usually only have like two or three that I can buy that uh, are like worth bothering with and no fights so far have ever really forced me to go hard on upgrading my stuff now I'm pretty sure uh, that I'm starting to get to that point I have gotten right? to that point I have hit some yeah. level 35s today I fought some sort of ice dragon in a cave he's a level 35 elite and I was like I got this it's blue now uh, his first uh-huh. attack did 1100 damage to my entire front row. Mm-hmm. Most of people died. Almost yeah. everyone. Immediately. Uh, I'll tell you, let's see, I'm thinking right now 1100. I think most of my front row would survive and i'm in my 50s and 60s and most of my characters okay. there i am i've just broken 40 on most of my characters oh, they yeah. wouldn't survive by a lot though <laughs> <laughs> except for like a couple characters who i know have like 1500 and stuff like our big and they're like they're chonky you know yeah it's kind of their whole their yep. whole thing is being chonky yeah Fior, but my, like, i have a fior and she would she would survive uh, she did survive she right. uh she didn't live very long once she was alone, though. <laughs> yeah. Turns so, out you have eight for a reason. Yeah. So I think this is one of those cases where, like, they're trying to let you know, hey, man, maybe you need some sort of, you know, specialized setup or something going on here. Yeah, that or, like, equipment. I mean, I think my highest level equipment is one tome that reached over 30, and the rest of my equipment's in the teens. Yeah, so, like... Th- those upgrades will make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, I, I don't know that this particular elite enemy, and because I definitely have not done all the random elites and stuff that I've found in the wilderness. I've like skipped 99% of that stuff. Oh, really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. 
That's Who why cares, you're man? going faster than me. Yeah, you don't need to do that stuff. You can come back to it later. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it will be there forever, right? Just like all the random stuff in the side, except for the one missable dungeon that Michael told me about. I yes. feel very little pressure to do anything other than eh, slowly work towards the nut farm quickly-ish. Slowly work yeah. towards the nut farm quickly-ish. I, I, haven't done like, like... I haven't done like traveler stories. I'm doing my dailies through doing the parts of the main stories. I actually finished... Uh, I'm get, we're getting off track because JJ's not done. But I finished her, uh, Herminia's story. We can talk about it later. But uh, JJ. Yeah. yeah. You don't stare at stats or you just don't care yet. I haven't cared yet. And what I don't know a, that I... Like a normal RPG that... Like you're playing Final Fantasy right now. Seven. I am? Remake. Oh, I beat that game, yeah. But uh, <laughs> so... That was a while ago. Uh, the... I think the, the difference here is... Like I don't have enough... I'm not going to have enough materials to buy armors for all my people. Regardless. So when it's like I click on specifically for armors, right? Weapons are a little more easier to discern, right? Because basically everyone has a different weapon. And so it's like, can't just really give them the best one. Yeah. Everyone gets yeah. the best you can get. And there you go. Easy done. Right. The weapons are much easier in that regard. For oh, armor, yeah. Super much it's easier. like, okay, I have like, I'm only getting three, <laughs> you know, it's like, right. Sure. We only getting three at the store today, kids. Don't get mad. No fighting. Who's got the worst one. You're getting your armor replaced, you know? And like, that's how we, or like, you know, okay, I got completely annihilated the last time I did something and clearly the armor on this one person was to blame because they just like a stiff breeze blew by and they died because I haven't upgraded their armor in forever. The, the game very clearly when you die to an elite is like, hey, maybe your equipment level's too low. Um, yeah. That, that was it, interesting. You know, it's like I'm getting to the point where it's like, okay, I've been doing hunts for several days now. It's like, Oh, I should probably like put accessories on everyone. I haven't done that. I should <laughs> probably should have done that. I did that today too. Yeah. It, w you have accessories? I have enough for my, one team to have accessories. Yeah. Where do you get them? Oh, I guess all the elites that you're fighting that I. So I have. Uh, yeah, most elites actually are guarding treasure chests. They'll have armor and equipment uh, behind them, almost exclusively. Yeah. Armor yeah. and equipment. Um. And um, I, unlike you guys, uh, made it a point to talk to and do all of the in-town path action NPCs. I don't have... Uh, okay. I've done all of those, and you get a lot from them. You get a lot of stuff from those guys. A lot of trinkets are behind the yellow um, wealth people. Behind yeah. haggling. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been skipping a lot of that stuff. Um, yep. But yeah, so I have finally now like gotten more than enough at this point. And it was like, oh, yeah, like I have like when I pick up an equipment or a, a bracelet or whatever that I notice is particularly good. And it's like, oh, OK, like this is more than like whatever one or like it does something unique. It's like, oh, it gives you a chance to give a bonus attack or like something a, weird like this. It's like, it's like oh, yeah, OK, I know about this one should have. Maybe you don't have it yet, but there's one that you should get pretty easily. That is a uh, chance to attack again. Yes, I think that's the one I have. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's like, oh, pretty I have some good. of these. <laughs> yeah. I have like multiple of those now. And it's like, yeah, OK. Like when I got someone, I was like, wait a minute, this thing again? Oh, hell yeah. I'm equipping this right now. Right. Yeah. But like, yep. again, frequently for armor specifically. Right. Because there's so many, you know, it's like, OK, I have the materials to buy the balanced one today. Who has bad armor? <laughs> like you're getting a balanced one. Here you go. And I haven't had to go so deep as to min max like, OK, you know, this character has weak magic defense. I'm going to give him high magic defense armor or whatever. Um, I suspect I'll eventually get there. Um, but today, not that day. Nice. Uh, can you oh. answer me a question? We can try. Uh, why is everything marked two or three or four when there's never a one? Like... What do you mean? Ode to Lightning 2. Ice Break just... on Break 2. Because it only counts the... It counts the first level of boost as 2. There is no 1 because it's just the default action. No, but like the name of the spell is always like oh. 2. 
or five. There are there are ones. Who what? <laughs> it's probably it's probably like a three star character that you don't uh, have has it somewhere yeah. on their skill tree. I don't even use yeah. three star characters. So that makes well, sense. That's, yeah. Uh, there, okay. there is one. Uh, I have I have a couple three star characters that are leveled up now only because I needed them to hit hunt thresholds. Mm-hmm. Um, I did start a hunt I use... party uh, that I have been leveling with Kate's recently. Yeah, I got to get those parties of only whatever type of influence that have 500 each. That's the hard part, man. Yeah, until you start getting higher levels and then you can start swapping out. Yeah, I mean, eventually, like once your characters are like level 80, they unlock like 100 points by themselves. Yeah, that's the the big problem I'm having is like I can't get my highest characters up that high yet, but we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> the uh but I still have one one three star character I keep in my main party because the her ability is her front row partner or her the partner in the same row as her gets 10% experience. And so oh. I've had my my highest level beginning five star character constantly with that character all the time so that her level can get pushed up higher and higher and that's how she's in like mid 60s now when all my the most of the rest of my characters are in their 50s like nice good choice uh so, speaking of elites uh michael i wasn't super incorrect stuff on the elites does mean stuff you're gonna have to be more specific yeah i'm gonna need some, <laughs> gonna need some uh more info here no, it's so the names of the elites. Oh, so yeah, like mighty versus menacing. Yeah, mighty means 10 hours and menacing means 20. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the only thing that means anything, though. What a game. I can't believe how much I enjoy it. Um, their Herminia ending was good. Bargello, Bar- Bargello. Bargello. He's a... Uh, what He's you? a Paul Walker kind of guy. Everything matters. His family, you know. Yeah, a, mm-hmm. you'll see. You'll see him and his family again soon, eventually. You know, the power of love saved us. We believed in our friends. I liked the little uh, transformation in that fight. I guess that's the non-spoilery way to say that. Like a two-phase ending to a story that's kind of early in the game was kind of cool. I figured it was be more straightforward than that. I will just say it is good that you like that. Oh, is it pretty common going forward? Yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say yeah. Yeah. I think... Okay. Uh, so did you have trouble with the fight at all? Was there any... You know, uh-uh. were you, I don't have trouble no. with any fights in the game except for the level 35 elites, and that's only sometimes... I try each one, and I can usually tell uh, if I'm going to win or not based on the first couple of attacks against a level 35 elite, if I'm basically dead or if I'm not basically dead. So I think my first one of those, and maybe we talked about it on this podcast, but I didn't you know, I didn't know the, the multi-phase thing was going to happen. And I had like used up a bunch of my SP on skills and stuff, getting it to the... Like, yeah, the end of the first phase, basically. Uh oh. And then it like transformed, and I was like, "Oh, mistakes no. were made." Yeah. I have like one more use of this skill, and then we are going to die, and and then we died. Based on <laughs> based on general RPG advice, in the first part of the fight, I had focus fired people down, uh, and it you made do that. Yeah, the, it made the ending pretty easy overall. I I'd really. I mean, being level forty, the main story at this point is like level twenty. It's not. Yeah, it's not you're way above. Yeah. yeah, it. Yeah, it'll catch up with you pretty quick, though. Okay. Yeah, I want. I want to say I just started chapter five of the next set of things. So I. I don't. Have you done all the chapter threes yet, Andrew? I am working my way through chapter threes, man. I. I, I know that I've done more side stuff than both you guys probably. Um, because I can, well, so the thing about it is it's the stuff that I can easily squeeze in while I'm walking to school pickup or I'm waiting for 15 minutes at like at a pickup or a soccer practice or whatever, you know, like I can't start the story stuff is, is good and it's, and it's well done and I'm glad they voice acted all of it and I want to listen to the voice acting and there's enough 
text that things make sense. But man, you have to set aside like 30 minutes before you can at least stop because my, you know, my app's going to close and I'm not, it's not going to stay suspended for some reason. Um, so I don't get as far in the story as quickly. I wish I could. I, it wasn't meant to be a criticism. I was just trying to understand where you were in the progress. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and so then, you know, you finish those three story arcs and then a single story arc starts. And I've just started chapter five of that story arc. Okay. The lands, as I've moved along, it was like, oh, you know, mid 20s. The next one is like, oh, like 30. Oh, like 40. Oh, like 55. <laughs> so like <laughs> they... They up and, you know, the the fights and stuff involved in these different areas scale quite quickly. You know, like previously in some of the areas, like I just didn't even bother fighting trash enemies, you know, as I'm wandering around the lands. Like, it's like I'm, these are level 17 monsters and I'm level 50. This is a waste of my time, like, to even fight these monsters, right? Like, what am I going to do with these materials by like level 15 armor that is also useless? So maybe Michael can answer this question. Michael, yeah. in the scheme of things... It seems to me fighting is better than fleeing no matter what because of the uh, bonuses you get for defeating certain amounts of enemies. Like, oh, you get 15 of these enemies. Now you got some rubies and some influence. Or is it just yeah, pittance it's an, and not it's worth an it? It's an easy way. Well, for that, for that, it's an easy way to just sort of like chip away because those levels on those awards just keep going up. I mean, the defeating enemy ones, I think, stop at 100 at the, with the third level. Um, but even then it's going to take you a while to get there. So you may as well, especially if you are, are way over leveled to them. Um, the little bit of gold is always good. Uh, when I get into levels that are like within the, you know, like if I'm in the level 30 area, I just fight everything, right? Like I'm, I'm not running away from every battle there, but if I'm in the like level 10 area, I'm not fighting this like level, like the guy, I the, the guy I fought one step out of town in the first day. I'm not fighting that guy again. Like, it's just not, I feel like hitting run away and not spending the time is better. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. It's probably an equal amount of time because you just hit boost all and alpha strike the guy to the, to the moon and you never yeah. hear from him again. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's my plan. I'm sticking to it right now. We'll see if it comes back to get me eventually. <laughs> it's not like I'm not fighting birds and rats and whatever other stuff out in wherever I am now either. So they still got them over there. Trust me. Yeah, I mean, the, Bird, where it's Birdman it's, 7 or whatever and, you know, stuff. Where it's really worth it, like the, the random trash mobs are never really going to be worth it for leveling up because it's pretty slow compared to some of the other ways that you can do it. But yeah, the collecting of resources is definitely the probably the main benefit there. Right. Which is why when I'm like. You know, when I'm on a quest that's in, you know, whatever the main quest I'm doing or the na the side thing that I'm doing, and it takes me to a place and it's like, go through here, find the person at the back end of this cave for whatever reason, right? Like, when I do that stuff, I'm fighting all those guys on that way to that cave. Because I have le I've learned, also, this game is nice and every time before a boss gives you the, the torches, thing, dude, yep, the no. torches, yeah. And my favorite thing about this is that now I've like, OK, I don't I can just use my skills. You know, when I come through a cave on my way to the guy, hey, there's an elite enemy. I can just fight it now. I don't have to worry. Right yeah. now, maybe I'm in trouble if I fight this elite enemy and then the next elite enemy. And then I do a, try and do a third one that might be pushing it depending on, you know, how it went. But, you know, at least I know, OK, I can go to the boss, heal, go do that. And then I can come back and do these elites afterwards or whatever if things are OK. Love it. Yeah. I'm very surprised that it's a free to play game that I've enjoyed this much personally. I'm very surprised personally. Uh, I, uh, I got real lucky and I got upgrade materials for a four and a half to a five star. I got one of the rare seals. Ooh. Oh, very I, nice. Where'd you I, find that? I, I, hunt from a hunt. Oh, See, uh, I don't, I don't have any four and a halves. <laughs> oh, no, no. Damn it. Oh, you've got it for when you pull one. Yeah, I guess, yeah. It'll happen. I'm sure I'll hit one. Pulled, I'm sure I'll hit one. Pulled the more difficult one to get. It'll happen. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So anyway, I was like so excited. It's like, oh my gosh, it's the rare seals that everyone always talks about. Wow. Then I'm like, wait a minute. Doesn't help me. <laughs> Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've gotten uh, I've gotten several of the silver ones, and I have classed up some three and a halfs into fours. Man, but I none of the gold hunts. yet. Yeah, I have enough to make some three and a halfs into fours. I just don't. I have like the wrong ones, you know. <laughs> it's like I have one to upgrade one of this type, but I don't have any ones of that type that I want to upgrade yet. So I need yeah, to get one, the hunts. one day. <laughs> Hunts are fun. Elite hunts are coming soon. Whoa. I will say, Andrew, what is that, that I think. Uh, so elite hunts are higher difficulty. They have different thresholds that you have to hit for your total party's influence. So instead of 300 and 500, I think they start at 400 and 600. Uh, but it basically doubles your chances every day because you get a regular hunt ticket and an elite hunt ticket every day. So it doubles your chances of, of seeing oh, the rare stuff drop. Sure. The thing I will say, Andrew, that is really nice about the hunts is if you don't do the easy hunt, um, well, you have to do the regular the hunt one time before you can do the easy hunt anyway. But... Even if you have done it and want to do the easy one, if you like are just not, know you're not going to have a ton of time, but you have time like now mm -hmm. and you're going to do some, you just want to do some combat stuff that's going to cross off pretty much everything on your list. Yeah. A hunt is going to do almost every daily quest you have. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. It'll hit a lot of them. Because you, you fight elite enemies only. There are no trash mobs in a hunt. You cool. fight many battles. So you're going to not, you might not get to 10 um, monsters or whatever, you'll be pretty darn close because a lot of the elites are going to have like two monsters or whatever, and then you'll get there. Um, it, like sometimes you'll fight a battle and there'll be like three Kates sitting there. Like, okay, <laughs> well, here we go, <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, it crosses off the elites. Everything that you beat drops like tons of stuff. So you'll get the 10 materials. Because they're elite. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you cross all, so again, you'll do like almost every single thing. Like, yeah, it won't use the path action for you. It won't use the exchange. It won't do whatever those other ones are. Sure. You, you just go to the blacksmith and sell yourself and you'll be done with that. So you do your hunts for dailies and that's it. That's cool. And you, and you're pretty close to done. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I need to hurry more. <laughs> you know, again, it's, it's a, the game even tells you, hey, it's a single player RPG. There really is no hurry. The only hurry is one day maybe they turn the servers off. But probably a ways from that. I mean, Record yeah. Keeper lasted how many years there, Michael? Uh, when they shut it off, it'll be right around seven and a half. Yep. Yeah, I think we got time. Yeah, I agree. It does make me nervous uh, watching all the videos about people than the weapon grinding and all that sort of stuff uh but yeah we'll see but i think the game is as much of that as you want to put into it true probably we'll see we'll see if there's just stuff later on where it's like i just can't do it because i don't have time to grind for weapons we'll see we'll see i think the thing about that is like you go yeah you don't have time to grind for weapons so you do the thing that they're doing to grind for weapons as your thing and you don't do the other thing later right yeah. yeah nothing it's not going away so you just you're at a different point on the the power creep curve right true good point and the bet the better thing is by the time you get to whatever thing they're doing mm -hmm. you'll have they'll all the guides will be out there telling you like okay the monsters attack patterns are this and the other thing and this yeah. thing and so here's how you go you order your team and do these sorts of things uh -huh. you won't have to like you won't have to pay like rock, paper, scissors dying over and over because ah they have an attack on turn six you have to have a break by then or whatever right cool um well you know we've still got a little time here jj if you want to talk about uh i i had a little time but you sound like you've had some time to maybe put into a non-free-to-play game uh you know i uh we talked about this a while back and we said hey you know uh I know, Andy, you randomly, uh, I don't know if it's randomly, but you accidentally bought a copy of Xenoblade Chronicles. I did. I pre-ordered it because I wanted to remember it, and it was, uh, I put it in the cart because I wanted to remember it, I accidentally pre-ordered it. It's all good. Doesn't matter. I'll play it eventually. Yeah. Uh, so I had done that also, actually, and so then uh, over a week or two ago, I finally decided I'd finished Final Fantasy VII Remake. And was like, ah, you know, maybe I'll play some of this. Uh, and so I started playing some of that. Did you stop playing some of that? 
no, I'm still going, but I, it's like going to be a never ending. These games take like a million hours, man. It's one day I'll get to the end, but there's so much to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, every, it's everything now. I mean, even that I have to decide how much I want to play that uh, Forza Horizon game because they they want it to last forever. I think it, it well, I mean, I don't know what the incentive I, is, though, for like making a RPG last a million and a half hours. I mean, the incentive is they get to tell an expansive story and fill like a million side quests in and have a bunch of stuff for you to do. Sure. Um, which is in which is interesting. And I think the thing I like about this so far is the early levels. And I, you know, Michael, uh, I'm sure you uh, remember the other Xenoblade games. I don't. Did you play two? You did. Right? I haven't played two yet. OK. Uh, you remember the beginning of Xenoblade one? I do. Kind of slow. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. A little bit. Takes takes a little while to get into it. I think this game does a way better job of like giving you stuff to do early on. And it's like not as boring. OK, so I think like this is the like a great like the first chapter of this game is so much more interesting than any of the past first chapters in these Xenoblade games. Um, Which I think is really cool. Uh there definitely are like references to the other games I can see as I've been going along, um, but not in a way that really has made any difference to what this game is. Uh, so that's been nice. Like, you know, I didn't have to remember like the plot details of Xenoblade 2, which I've completely forgotten. That's good. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, helpful. But like I I see something, I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure that was something that happened in Z- or like a thing that was in Xenoblade 2, right? It's like, oh, OK. Um, so it's been really fun. I really, really enjoy the like uh, the combat system and the things, the changes they've made to it here. Been pretty, pretty smart, it feels, um, in that they have, they've taken some of the, you know, if you never played two, it's hard to describe, but there's. I've, you know, I've seen some of the combat from two. So you, there's a, there's sort of a pair system in two where you're paired with this like, I think they call it a blade. In a that blade. Game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's a big like uh, summon essentially. And you, you know, you do abilities and then the summon can do abilities and then you can do abilities paired together. So they sort of give you that kind of system again. You know, they sort of dole that out over time. So you don't have to overwhelmed with the craziness of it right off the bat, but it can get very crazy. And but it, you don't you're not paired with another character. It's just like two classes of your of the same character. Right. So the, whatever character you're controlling you have your abilities from the current class that you are and another set of abilities that you can select from the other classes that you've used. Okay. Which can lead to some really wild combinations of like, I use this ability and not only does it taunt all the enemies around me, but it also like gives me an aura that deals damage back to all of them. Oh, and cool. This other, That's a good combo. This yeah. other one I use... Uh, drops a circle on the ground that increases the damage of all my allies in it and also decreases my time between attacks. So I attack faster. Um, But in order to use those things, right, like the second ability start on cooldown at the start. So you, you know, have to wait for those cooldowns to come up before you can use them both together, which gives it a stronger effect. And so there's a lot of like interesting things to play with there. Um, you know, they, you can cancel things into other things like you use this ability and then you use the next ability and it cancels out and you don't have to waste animation time, things like that. Um, and they eventually give you a pair up mechanic where you can pair up with other characters and do like ultra cool special moves. Um, it, it's just a really fun system. And like the number of classes, you know, they give you uh, there's six characters on the field this time uh, instead of your usual like three or four in these games. So there's a lot more different characters running around doing stuff. Um, And so you have like each one starts initially with their own class, but it's like classes have roles, right? It's like attacker role, defender role, healer role. And you kind of start off with two of each. So you have two, two, two. Okay. Uh, But like, as you go on, like, oh my God, there are so many classes. (laughs) It's Uh like, it's like you're buried under the like crazy amount of different combinations of classes you can get because, you know, once you finish a class, yeah, time to move on to another class, right? You know, you can't level up this one anymore. Got to do something else. Okay, well, I, which of these other sixty classes or whatever? It, I, it's not sixty, but it, it is a lot. lot. Of the, it's the Final Fantasy job system all over again. Do totally, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, like if I pair up this attacker ability on my healer, 
I can do healing and damage at the same time. Is that good? <laughs> or would I rather want like my defender character when they use their taunt ability heals themselves? That's kind of sweet. You know, but then you have to have them play as the healer for a while to learn those skills. Yeah. So like you have to like rotate everyone's roles around and it's been pretty, it's pretty fun, like managing a whole bunch of different wheels uh, like that. And if you want to, like, it will let you, like, go all the way down the rabbit hole. It'll be like, pick every single art, you know, every single ability that you use from every single class and, like, mix and match all of them and, like, you know, compare it all. Or you can hit the button that says auto <laughs> and just pick some good ones. Let it run. And let it go. Let um, it ride, baby. This game, this game does away with a lot of the equipment that you equip. So you, there aren't, like, you know, you don't have a headpiece and a chest piece and an armor and a legs and a sunglasses and all those sorts of different pieces you just have like accessories uh and you know the number of accessory slots you get increases with your level but you start off with one uh and so then you don't have to juggle like a million pieces of equipment because you'd want to change a million pieces every time you change your role i kind of like that it's a, it's nice and as a result of that then your the characters are like clothing doesn't change because they're not wearing like something weird because you put it like a green vest on them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the convenient thing is the clothing is tied to what role they're on, what class they are. I was going to so say, you, doesn't you it can change tell. the class? It does. And so you can tell who is which class by what they're wearing. Yeah, that's a uh, really the default thing. It's very nice. And, and yeah, exactly. Actually, Andrew, it's exactly like that, right? There's a version of that outfit for every single character. Yeah, that's a fun. I liked that a lot when I was playing that game. It's like, Oh, cool. My guy now looks like a dark mage. That's fun. Ah, I can tell this person is using the big hammer class because not only are they carrying a big hammer, but they're wearing the little vest and the backpack thing like that one has. Yeah. Or, oh, this is the defender with the huge overcoat because they have the huge overcoat, you know? It does help with um, instant recognition, too, of like, oh, I'm on this character. Oh, yeah, they're going to have these abilities. Yeah, and when you're like switching characters in the middle of battle because your AI characters are dumb and not using their skills right, you like, I need to get over to the tank guy so I can hit the thing, and there we go, so I can switch back to the other person and use the other thing, right? Um, that kind of stuff, yeah. Although I have found I don't need to do a ton of that. Um, certainly, I have been able to get by without doing that. Um, but in Grand Xenoblade Chronicles tradition, if you do the side quests, you become massively over leveled for everything. And there's like <laughs> oh, yeah. no difficulty at all um, in the main story quests. And that's kind of where I am so far. So um, I wonder if that yeah. means they didn't ex they don't expect people to really get that deep, you know? Well, one of these like that's been a hallmark of every one of these games that I've ever played is if you do all the side quests. Like, dude, bro, bro, there are so many side quests. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there are. And it is really easy at that point to just, like, way over level yourself. So, you know, they do have some uh, way to sort of, like, tailor that upward growth. I mean, you know, you don't, the side quests aren't going away, at least so far as I can tell. That Nothing has told me that any of these quests <laughs> are going to leave. Um, so you can just come back and do them later, right? If you want more challenge, like, stop doing that and go to higher level areas and go fight those monsters. Um, you know, go fight the named monsters, go fight the unique monsters of, you know, equal or higher level, and you'll find quite a bit of challenge there if you want it. Um, but like the stuff, the main quest bosses that I've been in, I've just been like so massively over leveled for it's kind of like whatever. Um, but, you know, hey, I mean, that's part of the RPG, right? You just get like crazy powerful, but I'm having fun like mixing and matching all my weird classes and like kind of don't care that I'm like <laughs> destroying the boss because it's like, ah. If I gain two more levels in this class, I can change them to a defender and then I can use this skill with that. That'll be sweet. Like, That's kind of where I am with this game. It is the hallmark of RPGing, right? Is playing so much that you're just like, and I'm just having fun because now the abilities are so strong. It's it's very satisfying to be like, I just did 4,000 damage with that character. Oh, yeah. And when you really get the like linked arts and stuff going together, it gets pretty, pretty nutty. You know, the... The classic Xenoblade Chronicles uh, debuffs of like break and then topple and daze. Yeah. This adds new ones, which maybe were in Xenoblade 2. I don't remember. There's one uh, that like knocks them up in the air, right? In yeah, this that, one? That, is, that is launch. Yes, I think launch is the new one. Okay. And then there is also burst uh, and smash. 
And I believe the, the way it works was, uh, and I think you have to launch first, but after you launch, you can either burst or smash. Okay. And burst is like a huge explosion of damage, uh, as you might expect. And smash, like they're while they're up flying in the air, essentially like flipping around. It is actually very funny to get launch off on people <laughs> because the, the animation is literally just like it throws them up into the air like it was a fighting game or something and they just spin really fast. <laughs> it's very I'm silly. Sad, uh, it sounded like a Smash ability. Like when you were talking it, about it, I was like, is this a Smash Brothers totally, ability? Totally. And Smash does like what you think and it takes them and hits them back down onto the ground and usually like, you know, uh, debuffs them or leaves them stunned a little bit for a while. So a lot of launch and Smash, huh? The problem is getting all those all those things to line up without manually doing it is kind of hard because your characters are, like I said, not always the smartest because you sure. have to go in that order. It has to go break first, then topple, then daze, then launch, and then smash. And so, like, you have to make sure the characters have those abilities ready and are all, like, you know, ready to go in that order, right? But right. you pull it off, it's fun. Awesome. Oh, this was times, RPG yeah. night. <laughs> Uh, and if you, you know, if you're playing an RPG out there, you want us to, uh, to hear, Hey, you should go try this one. If you like those abilities, you should email that to us at, yeah, people can send that to podcast at we were gamers.com. That's, uh, we will, we would love to hear about the RPGs y'all people are into. Yeah. Really quick here at the end. I also played Battletech 3062 Advanced for a while. I figured that was a whole another day. <laughs> no. Nah, it, oh, okay. It's still, it's, still battle, it's still Battletech, you know? Okay. It's just a lot more. A lot. A lot more. <laughs> okay. Describe, describe to me, is it like just the combat that's a lot more? Yeah, and it takes a lot longer because there are so many more things going on. It's fiddly. Well, it, that it's not. I mean, I didn't find it to once I got going, I didn't find it to be that much more fiddly. But it is definitely like you need to you need to approach it a lot more like you're playing a tabletop game. It's not a video game anymore. You need to be thinking like, OK, I'm going to get like 50 shots here. Mm hmm. And I need to hit better than this percentage. How likely am I to actually do meaningful damage? Yeah, it, it turns into a math game a little bit. A little bit. And, you know, if you, if you have a guy with like six lasers and you're like shooting at 70%, you're like, all right, like some of these are going to hit. That's probably all right. But if you're shooting at 50%, eh, maybe this isn't a good plan guns. anymore. <laughs> or do something to make your odds better, right? Yeah. Use a different person, change the terrain. You know, or change your, you know, your height or do something else to make yourself have better odds. And it's, it's been a different experience playing because there are so many more variables going on, right? Like, oh, what I really need to do here is wait and my tank is going to come over this ridge and like the tank has three PPCs and it's going to like nuke this dude <laughs> into <laughs> high orbit, right? And like, I don't need to use my little guy here and shoot these lasers. This isn't, this isn't his job. He can just go over here and do something else like that kind of stuff. So it's been interesting. I don't know. I played a few rounds of it, but it like takes so long, man. <laughs> Cause again, you fight a medium mech and they have so much more, like you hit way less often. They have so many more, uh, frequently a lot more armor, uh, because the mechs are outfitted like more reasonably. They have like good loadouts and stuff and they can hurt you quite badly. If you get out of position, there were some that and, were kind of ridiculous in the main game where you're like, well, how would this ever hurt me? Yeah, it's like I have six machine guns. It's like you, good luck, bro. <laughs> you figure that out. I don't know. I'm gonna stand back here with these lasers, and uh, we'll see how that goes for you. Yeah. <laughs> um. It, it, but also because you can't just like shoot at guys to lower their evasion anymore. Like, you have to have a plan. <laughs> like, you can't just go and like, okay, this guy has six evasion. I'm just gonna, gonna chip away at his evasion, <laughs> and then come in with the big mech at the end of just like blow him up. Right. You can't do that. So you have to have a plan. If this like sprinty little mech is running by your team, that was my you plan. Do something. Yeah, that was always so my that, plan. The crab and stands still, and everyone else shoots off the evasion, and then the crab blows them up. And 
So if you want to execute that plan, you still can, but you need to do things in order to get that to happen, right? The crab can stand still and nuke that guy into high orbit again, but you need to have other people, you know, sensor lock him or kick him in melee so that he's unsteady and loses those evasion percentages or, you know, there's equipment now that can do these sorts of things, targets and like kinds mm-hmm. of all kinds of weird computer pieces and stuff that can do stuff. Cool. Use the tag system or whatever. All these other things that you can do that can improve those odds. And then you hit him with the giant lasers. <laughs> so it, it's been interesting. It's like one of those fun things when I'm like, I want to think slightly more than when I play an RPG, but not too much. Sure. And like when it goes bad, man, it goes really bad. It's like if you mess up and your light mech gets shot at by a dude with a strong laser, it's just going to be the end of your day. And like, don't even bother trying to repair that mech, dude. It lost like 15 components when it got caught. <laughs> just throw it in the trash. You have, did you have, is it, it's not in that because of all this extra complexity, right? It's not like you can just hit repair on all the pieces. No. Do you have extra, en- do you have extra engines lying around? Do you have extra arm components? Do you have extra armor slots? Do you have extra heat sinks? Do you have like, you know, all the equipment that goes in a mech? You have to have that too. You can't just repair the body piece. It's a lot. Back to the old mech warrior mercs days. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you're like scrounging around the store and I'm like, man, I need like, I need more ferrofibrous armor and I really could use like a XL160 engine because my current one got shot and is like kind of bad now. This kind of stuff. So it's really, really uh, in depth and it really is sweet if people like this stuff. So Excelsior. Yes, that's all I got. I love it. I, I wish I had time for Battletech. I want it. I want time for Battletech. I'm going to have to make some time. It, it really feels like I, like I said, I'm really playing it like very sparingly because if I want to do anything else, I can't play this game. <laughs>